Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, my next step that I think I'm going to take is to create what I'm calling the controller process, or basically the steps, the actual steps that are going to be taken by the process to do everything. You know, just, uh, it's going to be kind of like, you know, do things like, okay, well, what, what state are we in right now? It's almost going to be a state machine, and it may be even implemented as a state, as a state machine. Um, you know, where be, be well, the first thing is we need to initialize stuff, and then we need to look and see what the GPS unit is doing. And then once we have a GPS signal and everything, we need to put up our stuff for the Wi-Fi web server and wait for somebody to connect to it, and then, you know, etc. With that in mind, I need to create all of those steps, and that's where I'm going to head next, is, uh, basically creating all that, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of like making that outline, uh, not actually creating and putting in place all the pieces, but just more, uh, you know, more of the, uh, you know, more of the, um, outline of everything. It's just, I, I don't know exactly how to put it, uh, just the, just more, more prototyping and such of what I, what I need in order to create, uh, the rest of the system. And uh, that will, what I'm hoping that'll do is that'll give me an idea of what, you know, what if any other libraries I may need, or at the minimum, what methods and what functions I'm going to need in those libraries to create. And those kinds of things can be uh, stubbed out in those libraries as well if I, if I have, you know, if, if I run across something, um, and I can go ahead and put those in place. So... Let's get started with that, and uh, you know, if, again, if I see something or you know, come up with you know, think you know, think it's uh, something very interesting, you know, well, I'll let you know. You know, until then, you know, once I get something done, then I'll go through the code again and show you what I have, and you know, of course, it's going to be up on the Junkbotics GitHub site, and uh, you can always uh, look at it there and download it and you know, use it, modify it, whatever you want to do. Um, but again, it's uh, you know it's going to be geared toward the ESP32, so just keep that in mind. You know that uh, it's not uh, you know it's not uh, really meant for really anything else. Although it could probably be easily adapted for something else if you you know really wanted to take the time for that. So let's go for it. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the model that I decided to go with. I decided to go with actually the uh, a state machine. Um, I felt that it would be the easiest thing to use for just uh, for creating this whole thing. It just uh, would be um, e easier easier to work with uh, and code and ultimately to. Um, to maintain in the future and whatnot, and also to follow the to follow the logic actually, um, and what I have here is like well here's here's the state machine um, outline what I'm calling it uh, that I that I've come up with that's going to be turned into the code. Um, so we have here basically I mean you know and, th and this and this uh, this uh, document and everything will be up on the uh, will be be on the GitHub site so um, on on the uh, repo so you can uh, check it out there. Um, this uh, this uh, basically I have a note here. Basically every state has a what I call a position uh, a potential transition state, meaning that it can transition to some other state, or it will stay at the current state. With the exception of one particular state, which is this HC, what I call HCF halt, and that's a kind of a stupid joke, but I decided to go with it. Um, if this state is hit, it can't transition out of that state, and at that point, you'd have to have to cycle the power or reset the microcontroller, embedded system, whatever you're using. Um, and it's meant as a, basically an, an emergency type situation. Um, but uh, you'll be able to see how it works here. So we have uh, we have these initial the initial state that the that the system will start out in is called wait for GPS. This is where it all starts out, and it can transition to this state from these two states here: handle invalid creds down here, or handle invalid message, which is right below it. 
Um, these uh, otherwise it, it, it just basically sits there and it's waiting for waiting for it to validate the 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 GPS signal that's uh, coming from from the thing. And I, I'm you know I don't know exactly how this is going to work, um, but I believe that you know basically once it gets a valid GPS signal, then it's ready to go. And uh, once it does, it then transitions to the wait for client request state. What this state is, is to basically wait for somebody to use their phone and go to the, go to the, uh, to the, to the robot's web server and load up the web page. That's the, what I call the controller page uh, from the web server that's on board the ESP32. Um, that will actually do the sending of the data from the phone, latitude, longitude, heading, um, back to the robot. And it also will have another function, which is called manual control, which will just have one function right now, which is called e-stop or emergency stop. And that's just in case, uh, you know, that it, you know, if, if I'm out there with this robot and it decides to take off and run away, I can just hit that. And the idea is that it'll just stop dead in its tracks, go to the HCF halt state, and just sit there um, and not move anymore. So that I can grab it and bring it back and figure out what's gone wrong. Um, but that particular that particular manual command uh, manual com command uh, uh, state, if you will, can be expanded to allow you to basically remote control the robot from the from the controller page. Um, I'm not going to put all that stuff in right this moment um, because it's not necessary for the uh, for for the purposes of this uh, of this experiment and model but uh, hey you know it's something that can be expanded upon. Um, so you can see that these states these you know there's a variety of different states there's a variety of states that that state can transition to, and there's a variety of states that it can that each of those states can be transitioned to from. I don't know if that made any sense. Uh, <laughs> so you know, this is the table that basically lays all that out, and um, then there are these these here these uh, what I call messages. These are uh, things that get sent from the browser with the exception of this thing called no message which is kind of like the default message um, that it just sits there until it starts receiving messages from the browser itself and those messages can either be what I call position update which is the GPS coordinates from the phone back to the robot or manual control in which the phone can manually control the robot um, and then there's a variety of responses back from the web server on the robot. Um, the controller page is one of them, obviously. Then we have various other messages that get sent back. Now, some of these messages, they'll just be probably ignored, or maybe I'll have a little text box in the controller page that'll show them as they come in, um, except for, you know, a few of them. Um, there'll be like one, you know, like uh, this invalid or valid credentials, probably the invalid credentials or the invalid message. I'll probably have it actually pop up something that says, hey, you've given invalid credentials, try again. Um, then, um, you know, and then, you know, there, there might be a few others that I might actually display. Um, but beyond that, these are just messages that are coming back from the, from the server itself back to the controller page on the the user's web browser on their phone. Then we get into the actual uh, pseudocode for, for the state machine. And I'll probably implement this state machine within the main loop on the, uh, on, on the, uh, uh, F, on the FM main controller or whatever .ino uh, thing, um, uh, saw, uh, code. Um, I, I had given thought to maybe making like a what I would call a state machine class, but ultimately that just gets a little bit too complicated. Doesn't help anything with 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 this whole uh, robot system, and it's just extra that doesn't really need to be there. So I'm just going to implement it as is. It's not really necessary to create an entire class. I had some ideas that are grandiose and just ah. So. 
you can see here that whenever it starts, it sets the, it sets the state, the initial state to wait for GPS and turns off the motors, turns off the beacon, set the way for GPS. And what it does is this is just going to be looping. And what these are are essentially it's just going to be a giant switch case uh, uh, system um, where each uh, case is a state. And these are all defined um, as, uh, as the individual states um, for the individual case statements. And whenever it finds one, it will, you know, in this case, wait for GPS. It basically here in the code, you know, this is not really, you know, completely laid out, but in the code, it'll be, okay, do I have a signal from the GPS? Yes, no. Do I have a good one? Um, no, not yet. If I don't, then, then I'll be calling a routine that'll fade the LED beacon in and out, kind of like a breathing type uh, situation, just ooh, ooh. And then whenever it receives a valid GPS signal, then it will flash and beep the beacons a couple times, real quick, just beep beep, and then set the state back to wait for client request, which will transition to this state here, and so on and so forth. You know, I'm not gonna go through all this. You can see how it kind of transitions, but this kind of state machine basically is a non-blocking type system. It'll just loop through there, and each time it'll hit hit the state that it's on, and it can do things, you know, such as waiting. It can do things such as, you know, fading the LED beacon, you know, doing whatever you want it to. Just like, um, you know, just like, you know, the the whole blink without delay, um, you know, function. It's it's it's, but it's in a it's in a state machine, and allows it to do things while it's waiting for other things. Um, about the best way I can, you know, while it's in a state or transitioning states. And this just continues on all the way through. And, you know, you can see that there's a, you know, all of each of each of the individual states, you know, here's the handling and manual control. You know, basically it gets, it's getting a command, you know, from the, from the phone that, says handle manual control essentially do we're doing manual control and it'll grab the it'll grab the it'll grab this the the various information from the command from the message you know what was it there's only one right well, there's only going to be one right now e-stop and if it hits if it gets the e-stop then it'll send the response back of the e-stop message back to the phone and then set the state to hcf halt so that the next time through the loop it'll go to the halt and just stop and that's down here you can see it'll turn off the motors it'll turn off the beacons and then it'll exit meaning it'll just come out of the you know basically come you know it'll still be in the state but it just drops out comes back comes back to the state and basically over and over again it's you know it's trying to you know it'll just sit there in that state and not do anything else there's no nowhere else it can transition to um you can see that I had some p potential future manual control commands, stopping, blinking, beeping, moving in different directions, probably at a particular speed, you know, but these are all things that I thought, you know, could be done in the future um, as, a, as, a, as an expansion on the controller. Um, we've got, uh, you know, once it gets to a certain, certain point, it'll handle, do the handling of the navigation. Um, It'll, well, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> get robot. Uh, I obviously didn't, probably these are uh, actually get the, get the robots, uh, get the robots um, position. <laughs> That's probably what, it, what I meant right there. Um, and then calculate the uh, heading and distance from the robot to the client. And then it sets a state immediately coming in here to handle movement. This was all just basically, it looks a little bit backwards or a little bit kind of vague, I don't know. Um, but it's better from a code, uh, a lack of, a code duplication type perspective. I, you know, I had other, you know, I could have done certain things that uh, said, you know, if distance isn't under the threshold, then handle movement, but you're setting two different states and you're doing two different ifs I don't know. I get kind of like, you know, just a little slight optimization. It's it's not really a bad thing, um, but ultimately, if if it's calculating the distance, if it's not under the threshold, meaning 
you know, I don't know, say within 10 feet of the user. Um, if it's beyond 10 feet away from the user, then it, then it continues to the handle movement um, state. Otherwise, it will set the state of handle arrival, which as you can see here, will send the arrival message. Flash the beep the beacons four times, turn off the motors, turn off the beacons, and then set the state to get onboard GPS data, which is at the top, basically sitting there and just hopefully not moving. Just says, hey, I'm here. You know, I'm waiting for you to do something. You move, you, you do manual control, whatever. Um, otherwise, it goes to handle movement, which, you know, is basically the pseudocode is set robot motors to move toward client position. Now, that that's where things will start getting, you know, complicated. But, uh, you know, ultimately, it's basically handling the movement and then getting the onboard GPS data, which is back up here. Get the onboard GPS data from from the from the, from the GPS um, saves the GPS data. Uh, I've got this here. Use running average filter for the GPS data for latitude, longitude, and heading. This will be to prevent it from doing weird stuff uh, because the latitude and longitude of the GPS signal, it's not. I don't know. I don't want to call it not accurate. It's just it jumps around. It jumps around just the way GPS is. And the best way to handle it is to take an average of the values and use that average value instead as the location or the heading or whatnot. Otherwise, it's going to get something and say, oh, I'm here. Oh, no, I'm here. Oh, no, I'm here. Rather than just saying, okay, I'm kind of sitting right here. This is cool. Um, doing a running average filter will handle that. There will be a similar filter on the phone as well before it sends its data back to the robot. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's, that's just ultimately because it does the same thing, you know, with any GPS system. It, that's just the way it does it. Um, and um, so this, you know, this, these, this, this running average filter will just basically take each of the, each of the values that it gets, keep them in a, you know, keep them in an array add them up, divide, there's your value. And takes the, you know, basically just the last 10 or whatever, however many is needed. Probably, probably, probably 10 is probably where I'll probably, probably put it at. And um, works with those values. Um, so this is, this is the outline of the state machine. And what I'm going to do next is put this, put this, uh, put this, pseudocode into actual code within within the within the framework that uh, that I'm building and uh, then you guys can take a look at it so I'll uh, get on to this and get that uh, get that in place and then put it up on the uh, github website or the github the github repo for uh, junk botics and you know then uh, then you know then you guys can you know check it out and see where things are going with it and uh, go from there. All right, hi, <laughs> coming back again. So I took the uh, state machine that I showed in the earlier video, the um, pseudocode that I wrote, and I converted it over into, uh, well, into actual code here. Um, I put it all into uh, my into the uh, main FM controller. Um, FM controller stands for follow me. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, so I just want to kind of show you what uh, what uh, what we have here. So in the FM controller in the uh, header file uh, that we can see up here, we have uh, we have a, a variety of the state machine states that you probably saw in the uh, pseudocode that I that I showed earlier. Um, each one of them uh, are, is given its own unique number, um, powers of two, because, well, why not? Also, powers of two actually actually do have a purpose. Not in this so much, but it's just something I've gotten used to. And that's because you can take these and technically you can add them together and come up with a number that is unique because they are powers of two and each one essentially represents a, a, a by uh, I want to say well it's a power of two but but kind of like a binary position within you know so if you added them together they're going to represent you know 
you know, if you added, say, uh, wait for GPS here, along with wait for client request and validate creds, uh, you're going to have a different number than if you added together get onboard GPS data, validate creds, and handled invalid message. Um, you know, these, 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 these numbers, they just, uh, you can discern them from each, you know, by, by doing that. Um, so, anyhow, <laughs> Um, you know the, the the way the way you could do it is is because they represent a binary number. Each one of these is represents one particular position in the binary number from uh, least significant bit to most significant bit. And uh, so if you converted that if you converted that value, whatever that uh, decimal or hexadecimal, whatever you want to call it, value is, and you converted that into a binary representation, there's going to be a one where you know, one of those is, is and a zero where there where it isn't. So, um, so by just looking at the ones that are marked as a binary one, you know which one of these are. Of course, you 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 can't change you can't change these numbers after the fact. But these numbers could be any number you wanted them to be. They just had to they just have to be unique for the area that they're in. So anyhow, we have all these uh, we have all these uh, state machine states. And uh, then we have uh, we have the messages, and of course they have similar values, but we don't, you know, that's not, you know, because these aren't being used as the state machine. We don't care that they have the same numbers, and uh, the same here for the uh, responses from the from the web server. Um, we have each one, and I've given some information here on what each one's for, just like I had in the uh, in the original in the original uh, pseudocode. Um, you know what 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 I what I'd written out, and oh by the way, the pseudocode is available on 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 the uh, GitHub site, and uh, of course this is too. So you know you can take a look at it yourself and compare it and see you know get an idea of how it's all how it's all done. So I've got all of these now. Of course, controller page is not really a server response, but I put it in here just to keep it uh, just to keep it complete, and it gets it gets a, a value of zero because it's not like I said it's not really a it's not really an actual message that is going back. It's just a page that's going to be uh, served. Um, so. Uh, the only other ones would be well the e any anything that was like a, a stop or a halt message e stop message gets the highest number in this case 999 and in here the HCF halt gets uh, all nines um, not a power of two but uh, that's okay that's okay I just want you know the, it it makes it really unique you know so I know that oh you know this is what it is. <laughs> Uh, don't have to worry about confusing this with any of the other states. Um, so these are these are the these are the defines for the state for the uh, state machine uh, states. Now over here in the FM controller, the the main FM controller I know, uh, we've got uh, we've got um, you know basically the everything that's that's going on. We we do some we do some additional things though. Uh, something that I that I added, and this is where I'm going to next uh, is. I updated I updated some other code the uh, the uh, Junkbotics beacons library is what got updated and it got updated to allow for the various kinds of beacons both audible and the visual or the LED I should say um, things that you can do with it and um, this 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 uh, this class and and the resulting object of course is all designed to be non-blocking, meaning that you can make a once you make a call to it, the code can just continue on, and it calls essentially inside. There's this. There's there's a couple of extra, you know. There's this there's this tick function here, number one, and whenever it it, it basically is called by these two. This is a, a private a, a private function. Um, I didn't want to call it tick everywhere because it just didn't sound good and didn't actually give any indication what's actually happening in the code. So these are actually kind of like you call this and they just virtually immediately call this. Uh, so that they're, it's kind of like a reference in a way. Um, and and uh, just uh, just kind of acts as a, as a link over from the public side to the private side. Um, it doesn't necessarily didn't really have to be that way. I could have just done everything in, in a public uh, type thing called a tick, but I wanted to know that, oh, I'm doing a blinking or I'm doing what I call breathing, which is where the LED um, can 
you know, essentially the, the LED can breathe, go from no light and slowly rise to light and then come back down and then back again. So, you know, breathing. Um, and then blink is just what it says. It's, it's either can be used for blinking, can be used for flashing, and you can also call it technically blinking for the audible alert too. You just, you, you've got the audible alert attached to the pen as a beacon and you tell it to blink and it'll go beep, 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 whatever you have it set up to. You can set up all kinds of parameters and stuff in it. Uh, in fact, you can see here are the settings that you can pass into into each, uh, each object to instantiate. So to give you an idea, over here, back over here to the FM controller, we have, uh, we, we, we instantiate these variety of beacons here that will be used later in the, in the, in the code. Um, the built-in beacon, that's the built-in LED. So I keep that because it allows for easier testing and stuff, allows for some testing and such. And then I've got the audible beacon, flash beacon, blink beacon, etc. And, um, each one of these objects, like Blink Beacon, Flash Beacon, and Breathe Beacon, they all point to the same pin. So you can call any any one of them, and it'll always activate the same thing. Um, but each one does something different. You know, Flash is going to be just a boop boop, you know, real flat, real quick. Whereas a Blink is going to be blink 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 blink, and a Breathe is well, I'm not gonna not gonna act out the breathing again. <laughs> all right, so. Um, we we do this we do the setting we we do the setup uh, you know instantiate the objects instantiate the objects here for those for those beacons, and then we initialize each one. Um, if you call just a nit in in the in the uh, beacon object, it's uh, without any without passing any parameters. It's basically the same as the blink without delay type thing. It's 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 like a half second blink. Um, so that it's just and it and it points to the built-in LED on the ESP32, which is on uh, GPI02. Um, otherwise, you can pass, you know, like in this case, the audible beacon, you know, I'm just doing a default blinking with the audible beacon, but passing the GPIO of the, of the audible beacon's uh, GPIO. And then here's a little bit more complex setup where I set the, for flashing, I set, set an on delay, which is how long it'll turn on and then turn off and how long it stays so it's like on off on off like that and um, all of the other all of the other defaults are, are kept in this case um, but there are several different parameters you can, you can pass in there to give it a style so that's what all this is does just just sets up those beacons and then in here in the loop is where we have the actual state machine defined and it's not completely defined but the main outline is right there so here it is, waiting for the GPS. That's the very first thing, um, in fact. And whenever, whenever, um, whenever you, uh, you know, one of these things that you see here is this uh, FM robot. Um, this is defined here. It's basically I have two two of these new classes, FM, the basically the robot class and the client class. And what they act is is uh, objects instantiated to represent. A particular like small state stuff and whatnot for the robot or for the client which is going to be the person's phone I call it the client um, and that allows the robot to kind of have an idea or actually have an idea of what is happening on the client so whenever the client sends its GPS coordinates those coordinates are going to go into that object and whenever the robot looks at its GPS coordinates and looks those up, those coordinates will go into FM robot. So one's going and climbing that way we can, you know, it just it's just basically a data structure for, for that information. So in this case, it sets the initial state of the state machine on the robot, which is wait for GPS. So it sets that state when it instantiates the when it instantiates the FM robot uh, excuse me, the FM robot um, object, and then it can get that state. So it gets that state and then this is not right. This is just this is just some stub code. I just say if true, <laughs> you know, just so I know that what I'm actually doing here is I'm going to say, oh, do I have a valid GPS signal? Yes. If I do, then set the state calling FM robot set state to wait for client request, which is this next state, and so on and so forth as I 
outlined before in the pseudocode of the state machine. If you look at the pseudocode of the state machine, you look at you look at this code, it's identical. This is this is how you implement that pseudocode state machine into a real state machine. And it just goes through and I have each one. Some of them aren't defined like get onboard GPS data. I don't have any of the code or any of that uh, any of that class for the for the um, etrex and whatnot coded. So it's just it's just commented out here. But other things where I could do things like setting the setting the state um, or uh, whatnot. I mean, I could have did it in here, but I didn't want to mess with it. It wasn't that big of a deal. I know how to do all this. Um, but for certain things, if it was at the top or the bottom of the block of code, I I would add that I would do the set state stuff. Uh, you know, but there are other there are other things. In fact, you can see here I didn't I didn't actually. I didn't actually take that out of the code where I did everywhere else. So you can see I say set the state handle to invalid creds once it gets to validate creds, which is what I do right here. Handle invalid creds. I set the state. So you can see how what I what I pseudocoded becomes actual code. And um, then um, you know each one of these things does that. Um, there are certain things uh, else uh, that um, that I haven't done quite yet but uh, could be done, um, such as up in here. Um, you know, we have controller page not requested, fade in and out LED beacon, LED breathing. Now, I haven't done it yet because I didn't, you know, I, you know this hadn't, you know, I'm, I'm setting up this, this state machine. And while I did change the, the, the beacon library, um, I felt that this was now time that I should, you know, stop, you know, cause I get, you get wrapped up and, you just want to keep coding and you know not do this video stuff, <laughs> so so you get kind of wrapped up in it, um, and uh, you know so so I thought it was a good time to stop and you know actually finish up this uh, video so that I could put it out there for you guys. So each one of these things happen, you know, setting the state, you know, you know these things will be filled out later, and that's where I'm going to next. Um, you know, in this case, uh, you know, there's uh, you know there's an extra one. I call this thing called halt. And I call the set state back to get onboard GPS data. Same thing that's in the pseudocode, um, and then and then the main halt here. Um, so yeah, just to show you what the beacon stuff looks like. Um, we have uh, you know I showed a little bit. This is the uh, the actual class definition. Um, we've got a we've got this uh, structure, this thing, this uh, for passing in. The settings for for the beacons and whatnot. So this is a structure for those settings, rather than having individual um, function uh, individual uh, function arguments being passed in that are different for each one. It just it just started getting messy. I was doing that at first, and I was like, you know, there's a better way of doing this, and this is the way I'm doing it. Um, so that I could also set up some default stuff. Bad thing about C C C and C plus plus is you know unlike some other languages, you can't well, you know, my C and C++ isn't exactly the best, nor the most recent, but as far as I could tell even today, you can't uh, pass in parameters to a function and have default parameters so you don't have to call the all the parameters on a function, you know, like most other modern languages do today. Anyhow, um, <laughs> so instead, you know, I kind of get around it by doing this, uh, by the, doing this structure and passing in, passing in the settings, um, which, uh, which I believe will work just fine. Um, last millis and tick, last millis is last millisecond. It's the same thing as in, in blink, in the blink without delay uh, examples and whatnot, but it's for controlling these beacons. Now, every time that uh, you call one of those uh, one of those uh, things like blink. It just calls tick. Breathe. It makes sure that the that the mode is and that probably needs to go away. I don't know. It it, it just basically calls tick. Each these two calls tick. But um, others others in here. Um, you know these other like reset. If uh, there's a thing that you can do, what's called a one shot beacon. And reset will allow you to reset that one shot so that you can fire it off again as an as as one, another one shot. Um, that's something that's going to be needed later, I believe. Um, so we come in here, we initialize things. We um, you know based on which mode I'm doing, whether I'm doing a to a, a toggle uh, type beacon, which is going to be a flashing beacon or a beeping beacon, um, then I just set the digital right. Otherwise. If it's the breathing, it needs all of this weird stuff. Now, 
this is real simple to understand actually. Um, we have some, we, we basically, on the ESP32, you do not have what's called analog write. I don't know why they didn't put that in there, because it would have been easy to do, but they didn't. Instead, they did these things that was called LEDC setup, LED attach pin, and LEDC write. LEDC write is kind of the equivalent of analog write, except it's just called kind of differently, and you pass in something really kind of slightly different. You have to pass in a PWM channel. But first, you have to hook that PWM channel with a particular frequency to and a particular resolution, um, you know, 8 bits, 16 bits, something like that. And then, once you have that set up, you then attach that PWM channel to a particular GPIO. And in this case, it's passing in the settings GPIO, so it's whatever that's set to that, you know, you've set your pin to. And then, and then you can do this LEDC write, which means for this PWM channel, you, you call it to the PWM channel, not the pin, and you pass it the value. Now, since this this particular, this this these are the things. See these PWM channel, PWM frequency, and PWM resolution. These are all defined in the header here, and I've got it set this way. I've got a PWM channel of zero. The first one, doesn't matter, we don't care. Um, a resolution of eight, it's an eight bit uh, resolution, so I can do a PWM level of zero to 255. And then a frequency of a thousand, I believe that's a thousand hertz, uh, a thousand cycles per second. So that's more than enough for, a, for an LED to fade and you know fade in and out or for it to blink or whatever. Um, it probably wouldn't be enough if you were using one of these PWM channels, say, to control a an H bridge or something. That would probably be too slow. You'd probably want to actually boost that up to at least 10,000. Um, this is this is an area I'm not completely familiar with. I'll just be honest here. Um, the SP32 is fairly new to me, um, and I'm not too, you know, I understand what's going on here, but I don't know all the, you know. Like, is there, is, you know, if, if I boosted this up to 10,000, would I be limited to a PDM re, P, or P, PWM resolution of 8? Or could I go to a higher resolution to give me more range? I don't know. Sometimes whenever you boost say, things in frequency, you have to go down in resolution. It is what I've, you know, have no know about from other hardware and whatnot. Um, and that the lower you get in your frequency. But I wouldn't think 10,000 would be too high of a frequency for... For it to for it to need to go down to eight eight bit, but I don't know. But in this case, I wanted to make it um, closer to uh, you know closer to what uh, what the, the uh, analog write was, which was a zero two fifty five, and um, you know just did it this way. And uh, so that those get all set up, and that's for if we're doing a breathing, which is this one's beacon toggle which is defined here, beacon toggle or beacon breathed. There's a third one here called beacon halted. Um, I'm not even sure that's even still used. It might be dead code. Yeah, I, I, you know, I did a lot of, did a lot of changes here. Um, so I might have to go look at that again. Um, but uh, we, you know, if we initialize it with settings, we do it here. If we initialize it just regular, and this of course takes the settings that you've passed in and then calls init with no, with no parameters so that it can take the settings you passed in and apply them. Otherwise, it takes the default settings and applies it if you just call init with no parameters. So, we've got that. We've got the one-shot reset. We've got the various uh, tick things for, for blinking and breathing. And uh, then we've got in here, for every tick, every time that gets called, um, it goes into, into basically a small state machine just for the, the beacons. And um, I won't go into too much detail on here, but it basically starts off with if you are doing the, to the toggle mode versus the breathing mode, you toggle between beacon on, beacon off, and beacon paused. Otherwise, you do beacon fade in, beacon fade out, and beacon paused. Um, and then there's the one shot here on pause, which basically says, Hey, if if we if we have one shot set, we pause and we pause forever until that gets reset, and that's the point of the reset. 
Um, and then here's just our, well, basically standard blink without delay code, um, except there's another state machine inside it, uh, or it, it is, you know, it's, you know, there's, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not as, it's, 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 it's a little bit involved. But, um, you know, there, you can go through the state machine and see what's going on, you know, in the case of, you know, whenever it's, uh, whenever it's beacon on, we turn on the beacon up there, um, right here with, uh, whoops, with right here with um, digital right, we turn it on. And then whenever it hits that on delay, you know, say it stays on for so many ticks or milliseconds, in theory, it's not really, a, probably won't be real milliseconds, but ticks, then it will turn it off by changing the state. And then in here, it counts down the number of, of ticks, which is t is set to a count in the settings. So you can tell it to, you can tell turn on and then turn off and do that for say five times. So I want it to blink five times, blink, 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 and then one shot hit, stop. Or you can say blink it for five times and then down here, pause. So you can say blink it for five times, pause a second, and then blink it five times, pause a second. That's what that does. So blink, 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 pause. One second, two seconds. Blink, 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 pause. You know, whatever. Um, or if you're breathing, it does the same thing. It fades in and it fades out. And you can see none of these things are blocking. As soon as it gets done here, it pops back out waits for the next call. So you can do stuff and you're not sitting in there when like a four next loop or something and blocking everything else. Now, I wouldn't, I didn't necessarily have to do it this way, but that's the way I decided to do it. Uh, because, um, you know, it, it, uh, it just allows more flexibility in the future. So you can take a look at this code, check it out, you know, look and see how it actually works and everything. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going and, um, you know, basically, building the other pieces of code that are that is that are needed all these other building out these uh, other uh, these these other libraries um, you know the you know the, the uh, Victor 884 controller and uh, the eTrex stuff and everything else and uh, build building those and uh, getting those in place into the framework and hopefully by the very end we'll have something that well I can't guarantee it'll work first time through but um, you never know it might. So until then, we'll see you guys later. Have fun. Thanks. Bugs flying.